let's talk about Earth's crust. Earth is made up of many concentric layers. Outer layer of the Earth is known as lithosphere. It has two parts, an upper part which is made up of granite rocks. Our continents are made up from this. Its main constituents are silica and aluminium, that is why it is also known as CR layer. Its average density is 2.7. Lower part is a continuous zone of denser basaltic rocks and our ocean floors are built out of this. It mainly consists of silica, iron and magnesium. That is why it is also known as SEMA and its average density is 3.0. And since Sial is lighter or less denser as compared to SEMA, so we can say that the continents are sort of floating over the denser SEMA. And just below the Earth's crust or lithosphere, we have the mantle layer, which is also known as mesosphere. It is made up of very dense rocks, and these dense rocks are rich in olivine. After that, we have the core, which is mainly made up of iron and some nickel. That is why it is also known as NIFE or knife. Temperature at core can be very high, around 3500 degrees Celsius, and pressure is also very high. The portion of Earth's crust which is covered with oceans is known as hydrosphere. Above the crust, up to a height of around 15 miles, there is an envelope of gases which is known as atmosphere. Let's have a look at this structure once again. First of all, there is crust which is 5 to 70 kilometers thick. After that, we have mantle which consists of two parts, upper mantle and lower mantle and together they are around 2800 kilometers in thickness. After that, we have the core, which also consists of two parts, outer core and inner core. Outer core is around 2200 kilometers and inner core is around 1200 kilometers. Let's talk about the classification of rocks. Rocks are classified into three major groups, which are igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Let's first talk about igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are formed by cooling and solidification of molten rocks or magma. This magma comes from inside the Earth's crust. Igneous rocks are mostly crystalline in structure. Igneous rocks can be further classified depending upon their mineral composition. If they are high in silica, then they are known as acidic igneous rocks, an example being granite. They are less dense and lighter in color as compared to basic rocks, which is the other category. Basic igneous rocks are rich in basic oxides like aluminium, magnesium, and iron. These are more dense and are also darker in color as compared to acidic rocks. We can also classify igneous rocks on the basis of their origin, the categories being plutonic rocks and volcanic rocks. Plutonic rocks are formed at some depth below the Earth's crust and they are formed by slow cooling and solidification. So the crystals are large and recognizable and they are also known as intrusive rocks. Their examples are granite, diorite and gabbro these are exposed to the earth's surface after denudation or erosion second category of igneous rocks was volcanic rocks these are formed by the lava which is poured out of the volcanoes and they are formed by rapid cooling and solidification and therefore their crystals are smaller basalt is a common example of such rocks and these are called extrusive rocks they also form lava flows, lava sheets, and lava plateaus, examples being Deccan Plateau in India and Antrim in Northern Ireland. Mostly igneous rocks are very hard and resistant, that's why they are used in road making, monument making, etc. Now let us talk about the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed by accumulation of sediments over a long period of time. They are unique in the sense that there is a layer formation or stratification therefore you find them in the form of stratified rocks now these layers or strata can have thickness which can vary from few inches to few feet rocks formed can be either coarse or fine grained they may be soft or they may be hard as well the material from which sedimentary rocks are formed can be brought by rivers glaciers winds or even animals these rocks are non-crystalline in nature and the chances of finding fossils in them is higher. Fossils of plants, animals and microorganisms can be found in them. Sedimentary rocks can be formed in three ways. Mechanically, organically and chemically. 
let's first talk about mechanically formed sedimentary rocks. They are formed by cementing together of material from other rocks. Sandstone is the most common example of such type of sedimentary rocks. They are formed from sand grains, quartz or granite. Sedimentary rocks are also formed by cementing together of larger sized pebbles. If such pebbles are rounded, then the sedimentary rocks thus formed are called conglomerates. And if the pebbles are angular and then the sedimentary rocks are formed, then such sedimentary rocks are known as breccia. Now let's talk about the organically formed sedimentary rocks. These are formed from the remains of living organisms like corals and shellfish. The fleshy part of these organisms are decomposed and only the hard shells remain behind. And from these hard shells, sedimentary rocks are formed. These are mostly of calcareous type and examples are limestone and chalk. Carbonaceous rocks are also organic in nature and are formed from vegetative matter in swamps and forests. Let's talk about chemically formed sedimentary rocks. These are formed by the chemical precipitation of the solutions. An example being gypsum which is formed by the evaporation of the salt lakes. Now let's talk about the metamorphic rocks. Igneous or sedimentary rocks can be converted into metamorphic rocks if sufficient heat and pressure is applied. Their original character and appearance changes a lot because of this process. For example, clay can become slate, limestone can become marble, sandstone can become quartzite, granite can become gneiss, shale can become schist, and coal can become graphite. Let's talk about the effect of rock type on the landscape. Softer rocks like clay and shale are worn down easily as compared to harder rocks. Harder rocks like granite. So because of this variation in hardness, our landscape may undergo variation. The softer rocks will get eroded easily and harder rocks will be difficult to erode and because of this a different kind of landscape will be created. Now let's talk about types of mountains. Starting with the fold mountains, these are the most common type of mountains which are found. These are formed by a large scale earth movement when there are stresses produced in the earth's crust. When such stresses are produced, rocks have to bear compressive forces. And because of this, wrinkling or folding is produced along the lines of weaknesses. Places where upfolded waves are formed are known as anticlines and wherever downfolds are produced, those are known as synclines. These up and down folds are similar to wrinkles formed on a tablecloth. Examples are Himalayas, Rockies, Andes and Alps. If fold progresses too far ahead, then it is known as overfold. And if it progresses even further, then it is known as recumbent fold. And in some extreme cases, fractures are developed and such folds are known as overthrust folds. The overriding portion of the thrust fold is known as nap. Fold mountains are also known as mountains of elevation. The minerals commonly found in them are tin, copper, gold and petroleum. Next category is block mountains. When earth's crust is bent, then folding occurs. But when it cracks, then faulting occurs. When tensional forces are produced because of earth's movement, then it pulls earth's crust in opposite direction and because of this fault is developed. A block which is trapped inside the faults, it can either rise or subside. The portion which is left behind is known as block mountain. The faulted edges are very steep and the top is almost flat. Hansrug mountains and black forest are examples of such kind of mountains. Sometimes a rift valley is also developed. Its example is East African Rift Valley. It is around 3000 miles long. It is in East Africa and it extends from Red Sea to Syria. Sometimes because of compressional forces also a thrust is developed or a reverse fault is developed. And because of this the crust becomes thin. In this case also the block may be either raised or lowered. Normally the block mountains and rift valleys are created because of tensional forces and not because of compressional forces. Third type of mountain is volcanic mountain. These are formed because of volcanoes and material ejected from the earth's crust. The material being volcanic lava, cinders, ashes, dust etc. Such material gets accumulated around the vent of volcano and mountains are formed. That is why it is also known as mountain of accumulation. 
Its example is Mount Fuji in Japan and Mount Meon in Philippines. Third type of mountain is residual mountain. Such mountains are formed by denudation. When a land subsides or goes lower because of denudation, but the resistant areas are left behind and such mountains are known as residual mountains. An example of such mountain is Mount Manadnock in USA. Now let's talk about different types of plateau. Plateau are elevated uplands which have extensive level surfaces and they steeply descend towards the nearby lowlands. There are different kinds of plateau and we will have a look at them. First one is the tectonic plateau. It is formed by the movement of earth. Because of movement of earth, land gets uplifted. A considerable size of the land gets uplifted. Their altitude remains quite uniform. An example is Deccan Plateau in India. Next plateau is the volcanic plateau. The molten lava which comes out of Earth's crust keeps getting spread over wide areas. Successive sheets of basaltic lava get accumulated. These ultimately solidify and form the lava plateau. An example being Antrim Plateau in Northern Ireland and also northwestern part of Deccan Plateau. Third type of plateau is the dissected plateau. It is formed by a continual process of weathering and erosion by running water, ice, wind, etc. The surface is quite irregular and example is Scottish Highlands. Let's talk about plains. A plain is an area of low land. It may be either level or it may be undulating or you may say irregular. It may have low hills which have a sort of curved surface. Some examples of plain are Russian steppes, North American prairies, Argentinian Pampas. Now looking at types of plains, first one is structural plains. These are structurally depressed areas of the world and these include some of the largest lowlands of the world. Example being Great Plain of USA or Central Lowland of Australia. Next are the depositional plains. These are formed by a deposition of material by different agents of transportation. The agents of transportation may be rivers or there may be some other agents as well. The examples being Nile Delta of Egypt and Ganges Delta of India. Third type of plain is the erosional plain. These are created by agents of erosion like rain, rivers, ice and wind. These agents over a period of time smoothen out the irregularities of the surface and create such plains. These are also called penne plains. In glaciated regions, glaciers and ice sheet also level out the land and create ice cored plains. In arid and semi-arid areas, plains are also created because of wind deflation. 